Hey y'all, it's Jorgogo again and I have returned. Now, a little disclaimer before we kick it into gear. Firstly, no, I am not dead. Despite my inactivity on this site and despite whatever my asshat cat may have told you. Piss off. But yeah, it's not that I went into some kind of hiatus. I've been extremely busy elsewhere and if you've been following me on Twitter, you may have caught on what I've been pouring blood, sweat, and spinal fluid into. In case if you don't know, I opened up an artist website that was originally just a portfolio, jorgogo.weebly.com. That may change considering I'm buying a domain soon, but whatever. Also, again, if you've been following me on Twitter, you may have noticed several art pieces of mine. That's because I've been busy creating all these prints that, man, made Metabay paint split in half. But the real reason I was busy making these prints is because I you decided... actually did it Jordan. You already know that I never fail to point out how horny you are, but you've reached a whole new level of horny to surpass my expectations. Color me shocked. That's one of my prints. Can you please put it down? You're getting your paw prints all over it. You actually wasted your hours of the day to draw something I should have saw coming a mile away. How do you think your viewers view you now, now that you downgraded yourself to lewd scum? Here's my reverse ask. You're questioning me now? Anywho, the real reason why I made these art prints is because I'm setting up an online store pretty soon here. For now, you can only buy digital commissions here, which means I'm not taking commissions over Twitter anymore. I'll be doing it over here. But I will be setting up my prints once I'm able to get a hold of a new P.O. box. And now here comes the more fun but stressful part. I'm also creating these prints all at once because I'm cooking up a special surprise for y'all. Now, I'm not going to say anything yet because nothing's set in stone, nothing's confirmed. But I assure you, it'll be a real tree once it comes to light. Now, I've only said what it was once during during a live stream, that being the Gears of War live stream over at Gaming Off the Grid. But if you weren't there and you don't know what it is, too bad. Anyway, it should go without saying that I've been away from Premiere Pro for a chunky long time, especially after the big update. So before you ask, yes, the game take episode for Just Cause 3 is still in production. Still. But I want to get back into it once I finish other projects since that's another huge episode all on its own. And it's one episode I want to make with confidence. So for now, I am back, I am alive, and now let's shift our attention to a series that I've been craving to cover but anxious to get into. That series being Mega Man. Or specifically Mega Man X. It looks cool, okay? <laughs> We're talking about one of the big boys today, Blue Big Gun Bean Boy. It's been a long time coming, y'all, but I'm barging myself into a series that I'm sure y'all have fun memories of. The little guy has been around for over 30 years. Can you believe that? We've seen many incarnations of our favorite blue boy all throughout the years, for better or worse. We got the original blue cutie pie, knockoff Digimon. What the hecky kind of design choice is this? My personal favorite, what could have been, and a spandex man with a diaper. <laughs> One more thing you should know by Mega Man is that I never played his games. Not a single one. I mean, I know about Mega Man, and I know about the characters and how each game functions, but don't expect me to give a full fanboy in-depth review here. The closest thing to a Mega Man game that I played was Mighty Number no. 9, and we all know what kind of dumpster pile that was. I got it on day one. Needless to say, I was stuck with a cheap knockoff cereal brand, but I always wondered what the real deal tasted like. Well now, thanks to the Capcom publisher sale that happened not too long ago, looky loo, I'm gonna play me some Mega Man. I personally wanted to start with the X series because, I don't know, at first glance, it just seems like it has a lot more to it. It has more of a darker story with a lot more action, but then again, how would I know? X just looks cool, okay? This is an over 20 year old game and there's a whole bunch of famous YouTubers who have covered this game and its entire series to death, offering a lot more content-wise because obviously they grew up with the series so they would have a lot more to say about it. So me, a regular Joe Schmo, just now getting into Mega Man X and wanting to talk about it, 
kind of feels intimidating. But I'm not trying to expand my big giga gamer brain here. I was just in the mood one day and I decided to buy the first Legacy Collection. So let's see what I've been missing out all these years. But in case if y'all are wondering if I'm ever going to play the actual Mega Man games, I don't know, maybe. It just seems a little too hard for me at the moment. Don't laugh! I will cry. Also, I am aware of the Zero Collection coming soon, but I don't know about that either. One step at a time, ladies. So without further ado, let's get down and funky with the Mega Man X series. Yes, I'm looking at all of them. Starting with Mega Man X. Another like a phone gimme! Now before we begin yo, if you own the Legacy Collection, there's a short movie in the gallery called The Day of Big Fancy E, I mean Sigma. It's a nice anime prologue to Mega Man X, showing what happens before the rebellion of the big baddie named well, Sigma. It was originally included with the PSP game Maverick Hunter X, a total HD remake of Mega Man X. This is the version I prefer if you want more story band to what got these Mavericks panties in a twist. And I think it's on the PS Vita too. That's if you have one. Like I do. So anywho, enough about that. What the hecky is going on with Mega Man X? Our story begins with everyone's favorite chunky monkey, Dr. Light, creating what seems to be a better version of Mega Man, specifically called X. A robot that's the first of its kind, with the ability to have free will. He has the ability to think, react, worry, and feel all on his own accord. Which, by the way, if you watched enough robot movies like I have, you would know that that's a very stupid idea. And yet we never learn. But thank God Dr. Light rethinks this. He believes the world won't be ready for an advanced AI like X. However, he feels like the world will need a new defender, because to put it briefly, X has the power to take down God like it's just another Monday morning. With that being said, Dr. Light seals X in a capsule. I'm guessing the program is moral compass to the right direction. Unfortunately though, he'll be sealed for over a hundred years, and Dr. Light looks too exhausted and old to the brink, he probably died the day after. Poor lad. Fast forward a hundred years, and we get introduced to Dr. Kane, who found X in the capsule, and decided it would be just the jolliest of ideas to copy X's free will programming into thousands of more robots. He calls these new robots Reploids, living besides humans humans peacefully all jolly and dandy. This is gonna go down south, isn't it? Spoilers, yes. The Reploids who decide to ruin everything for everyone else are called Mavericks. And because of their endless destruction, this has led to the creation to the group, the Maverick Hunters, led by Sigma, AKA a Disney lawsuit. Oh, they're gonna have a field day with you. And the two most notable members of the Maverick Hunters are Zero, who was supposed to be the new Mega Man created by Inafume, but was drastically different from the original. Our second member is, hey, look at that, X. However, Sigma is somehow gone Maverick along with the other Maverick Hunter buddies like Chill Penguin and Storm Eagle. Somehow. This is literally taking the world by storm and putting all the Reploids and humans in danger. So it's up to X to put a stop to these goons once and for all. And I guess Zero will help too. Say hello. We gotta eventually find Sigma's fortress. See you next game, pal. And take down the big man and take back our lunch money. We glance over a cliff wondering, how long is this gonna go on? And then we get a message from Sigma that he'll for sure return someday to give us a run for our money once more. Of course you will. Now keep this in mind, I went and got this knowledge from the PSP short movie and the opening to the actual game. Now imagine going into this game blind, you may have saw that opening showing what X is, but as soon as you press that start button, Oh dear, what did I just walk into? And just BAM! The game jumps you straight into the action! No controls, no tutorial, you're immediately thrown into the disposition. It's your first day on the job, now do or die! Man, I love this! There's no half-assed tutorial waiting for you because you learn the game as you go. And I think that's the most rewarding when you got the controls down and you nail down how the game works. Let me just add this too. That title screen, ugh, it just screams badass! In fact, the whole dang sound Track just screams, yeah, time to destroy! Just, uh, uh, just listen to the soundtrack just for a little bit. Let me digress for a second. Let me bless your ears.
You are on a mission, and that's to save the world and to rip out some spines. Oh, not mine! You feel like you're ready to save the world? Press start and just go for it. You can do it. You're unstoppable. You have a mission, and hecky, you're going to see it through if my name isn't... <laughs> Let's talk about that gameplay, shall we? Now, the neat thing here is that most Mega Man games pretty much run the same, so I don't have to explain that you run and gun and defeat bosses for future reviews every time. Especially since the next two games share the same gorgeous 32-bit art style, which will be very nice. So firstly, one of the most notable things about any Mega Man game is that there's no such thing as Stage 1. I'll tell you that right off the bat. You choose your stage one. There's a total of eight stages to choose from, each one having a respected prick waiting for you at the end. You gotta go through the level first to get to the boss, which can be a total pain all on its own. You take down the dude and then their power is yours. You repeat the process until you beat all eight Mavericks. This should sound pretty simple, right? After the opening stage, you should have all the basics down. Now about that actual gameplay, this is a run and gun 2D platformer that has you defeating robots that want a taste of those sweet cheeks of yours, and when your little nerf gun ain't doing it, just charge that big boy up and fire a painful piercing BE GONE! HOT! So yes, in case you couldn't tell, you have your standard Mega Buster all throughout the game that has unlimited ammo and can get the job done. But you do earn additional weapons as you play the game, more on them just a bit. And each level has its share of platforming challenges and mini bosses which will stop on your gamer groins if you're not careful. And speaking of which... The game's hard. Yeah, the difficulty is no joke, and if you're just now starting the game, it will eat your heart out. You can be extra careful when defeating robots, and yeah, you can turn on rookie mode to take less damage, but there's still the overabundance of tight platforming segments, it's the kill spikes, what Mega Man game is complete without them, and also the fact that enemies do respawn off screen that you gotta look out for, and with only two lives to start off with? There's only so much you can do without entering a state of panic. One mega crucial chunky piece of advice I gotta give you is level recognition. Obviously, as you start the game, you'll be dying a lot. So while in a never-ending cycle of hellfire, get to know the level and what mini bosses stand in your way. I don't recommend looking at a guide, to be honest, because the recognition is the most rewarding when you finally nail it down. And if you just keep on sucky, I mean, dying, no problem, just try another level and see which one suits you fancy. Because I'll say this again, there's no such thing as stage one. That's up to you. Each level has equal tendencies to kick your butt. Equal rights, y'all. But of course, I can't talk about the levels without talking about what's waiting for you at the end. Of course, it's the Maverick. Hope you saved plenty of energy and lives because it's these jerkwads that have a craving for gamer tears. Just like with level recognition, attack recognition is just as important as each Maverick has a series of attacks they'll throw at you. Pay close attention to their sprite animations and it should click with you what the dude might do next, especially with their attack patterns making it easier what's coming. And once you do get the attack patterns down, you you definitely should. Yeah, you like that? Suck the deepest part of my butt, Jagoff! Suck it, suck it good! And here's the icing on the cake. Once you do beat the Maverick, you get their power. It has limited ammo, which you should be careful with. But these are not only a nice change of pace instead of just having your little dark gun on you, but some of these weapons, no joke, can rip these stages in two. And if you're a fan of the game, you know that I'm talking about the Storm Tornado. Just fire that bad boy and I guarantee there won't be survivors. It goes away off screen, so if you have the dash shoes, follow it and no one will stand in your way ever again. And why? While we're on the subject of the weapons, another thing you should keep in mind is like I said, you have to watch your ammo consumption because certain Mavericks are weak to certain weapons. Like if you beat Chill Penguin, you get his ice weapon and you can use it against Spark Randall. He'll freeze and it'll reset his attacks. And once you get his weapon, use it against Armored Arbadillo and it'll chip off his armor. Finding these enemy weaknesses is really up to you, but man, they will fall like moths to a buzzer when you find the right one. Don't look at the light! I can't help. It's so beautiful! Note that these bosses can be put down with your little pea shooter, but some bosses are a lot harder than others doing it that way. Which is why I recommend dealing with the chameleon last.
Lick, lick. Here's another cool bit. Some stages can alter in your favor depending on which Mavericks you destroyed first. Like, are you having trouble in Spark Mandrel's stage, you filthy mongrel? We'll beat Stormigo stage first and the electric currents on the floor will be gone. And defeating Chill Penguin will freeze the whole Flame Mammoth stage, making it easier to explore. Now, if you want my advice on which stage you should start off with, I recommend going at the Chill Penguin first. An alright stage in terms of difficulty and with a boss that's the easiest to learn. No, really guys this guy's a total joke this is also the stage where you acquire the dash shoes which you'll need in coming stages after that mess you should go after the big scary bird a tougher stage to be sure but it's made up by the boss of the end being an even bigger joke his weapon is super op i can't stress that enough Okay, all the Mavericks are dead now, it's time to head into Sigma's Fortress. No, let me stop you right there. This is not a drill. Before you head into Sigma's Fortress, this is your PSA for the day. Find all the upgrades. Find them all. Go get them. Right now. You have the dash shoes that are right there in plain sight, but some require a tad bit of exploration. There's a helmet upgrade that lets you destroy certain items by jumping and headbutting them. A body upgrade, which cuts damage in half. A must. An arm upgrade, which upgrades your charge shot. A must. The upgraded charge shot also affects your other weapons, giving them that extra oomph. Like the charged tornado, which turns into a literal vortex of the there is no god. The charged stink shot makes you invincible for a short period of time if the feel for cheese is needed. I'm not judging you. There's also heart tanks you need to collect that are hidden around the level, giving you a much needed permanent boost in health. Highly recommend. There's also the sub tanks that give you extra ammo, I think? I mean, I collected all four, but you tell me what they do. I have no idea. But now, with everything collected, except for the Hadouken, I know it's a thing, and I don't want to collect it right now. Shut up. It's time we fight the big man himself. Watch out, bootleg Buzz Lightyear. You're about to be my bitch. Oh, okay, I gotta take down your dog first. Now, we settle this one-on-one. -on -one. Come on, here we go. Can he chill out? I'm about to die. Go away! There. It wasn't so bad after all, but I finally beat you. Mother. No, no! I, I, I had to start over? C come on! No! Okay, one more. I got one more shot. No! And I have to do all that again? Oh, this game can shove it! <sighs> I'll try again later. Wanna play another game of Kill Bang Mario on Pornhub? N no, I died again at Sigma's Fortress. Just give me a minute. I need a break. Is rookie mode too hard for you? I only turned it on for Sigma's Fortress, Tux. Oh, and what? You could do better? I saw your pause menu. You had everything you needed. The weapons, the armor upgrades, even the sub-tanks. Uh, sub-tanks? Do you even know what they're for? You have all four of them. Yeah, but I have no idea what they're for. You tell me. They help you regain health from the pause menu. They looked filled up too. Too bad you didn't know before you got a game over at the final boss. So, in conclusion, this is a really long review for a Mega Man game, but can't y'all tell I love this game? Cause I do. Everything from the level design, the graphics, the rockin' soundtrack, and all the pickups that make a hard game way easier on you. That's also something I love about this game. You devote the time into it, and you turn from a small strippy twink into the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The badass the game's mood and the music builds up is you. You eventually become that badass. And by the time you find an upgrade, a sub tank, or your first three weapons, the game becomes a cakewalk for you. Well, I wouldn't say that, never mind. It doesn't get easier by any means. You just know how the game works and what's to come. I regret not giving this a chance beforehand because I love games like this. A hard game that gets easier with time and devotion. And after the making of this video, hell yeah, I got the second Legacy Collection. I want to look at all of them. I honestly cannot wait until I jump into the franchise once more. I heard Seven was the weird uncle of the bunch.
So that was my good old fashioned hot take. My game take. What did you guys think of this video? Hecky, what do you think of Mega Man X? Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and be sure to like and most importantly, subscribe because guys, I'm not going anywhere. You'll be seeing me again and I only get funkier every time. If you want any more updates on what's going on, I recommend checking out my Twitter or Facebook page or if you want to go the extra mile on supporting me, I recommend checking out my Tee Public store or my Patreon page. And don't forget to check out my new Jorgo page. You can even buy commissions from there too. All the links will be down below. So until we meet again guys, be cool, be wild, and be groovy. And remember, haha, -ha, there you are. Okay now little doggy, let's see if you're all bark or if you got some bite. Oh wow, your voice is badass and spicy. Freedom doesn't require all this suffering. Wait. You sound very familiar. God damn! <laughs>